Hi everyone. We have about 31 participants now. So it's uh, 8 p.m. Singapore time and uh, we'll get started. It's great to see uh, participants from various locations around the world. I hope all of you are uh, safe. Uh, thanks a lot for taking time and joining today. So let's, let's get started. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Karthik from Eon Reality Singapore. I manage the Eon XR platform deliveries for the Asia Pacific region and also oversees the ARS product development roadmap. So uh, thank you for joining me today. In today's session, we will be uh, taking a deeper look at our uh, Eon XR AR Assist application. And uh, we will also take a look at some of its features. We will have a walkthrough of the application itself. And at the end of the session, we'll actually have a Q&A. So uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please use our chat box uh, to raise your queries. Uh, for, the, for the participants who are not sure where to find the chat bot, you should see a three dot menu on your right center of your screen. Just select that and you should see the chat option. It's, it's the third icon from the top. And uh, during the Q&A session, if you have any questions, you can also ask them verbally as well. Uh, just, uh, you know, select the speak uh, or the hand symbol. There is a last icon uh, to raise and then, you know, uh, and then we will be, uh, you know, uh, giving you an opportunity to ask your questions as well. And, uh, and also my request is uh, during this session, I request all of you to mute yourself so that, you know, we don't cause any inconvenience for others. And you can actually unmute it when you want to ask the questions as well. Okay, so uh, today's webinar uh, would last about 25 to 30 minutes uh, and, you know, I'll try to uh, keep it uh, as short as possible and also try to spend more time in, um, you know, answering your questions. So with that said, you know, thanks again for joining today and let's get started. Okay, so what is AR Assist? Uh, Eon XR AR Assist is a remote assistance tool that is designed to help on-field engineers, operators, or technicians, uh, wherever they are in the world, to connect with the subject matter experts or, you know, or their employees to get the real-time support they need. So uh, the, the application comes with a set of features that helps for easy to use and effective collaboration uh, between the experts and technicians using augmented reality. So uh, we have designed AR Assist uh, to help enterprise customers to adapt uh, you know quickly using ar uh, especially while we are all working uh, uh, remotely and you know trying to kind of make most use of our time by collaborating with our uh, colleagues around the world uh, it and it also helps to reduce a lot of travel and operational costs as well and uh, our ar assist will be delivered as a part of eon xr platform so it can be deployed uh, for a small team within an enterprise or throughout the entire enterprise as well, depending on your requirements. Okay, so uh, I'm, I think most of you are already familiar with what Eon XR platform is, uh, but uh, for, for new participants who are new to our platform, uh, in Eon XR platform is actually uh, in no code, very easy to use tool for creating new AR and VR experiences. So it's actually a cross-platform compatible, uh, you know, tool. You can actually create experiences right on, right, from your smartphones or your desktop, it could be Windows or Mac OS, and you know your applications will be scaled automatically to play on various devices. Uh, it could be uh, like you know an AR mode on smartphones, or it can be like a fully immersive VR mode using either Oculus Quest or even uh, in using mixed reality devices such as Magic Leap as well. It's quite a powerful tool. So uh, we have recently launched the version nine uh, in, in June last month. It comes with a lot of new and exciting features. So I'll quickly run through the new features of version nine and before we deep dive into AR assist application itself.
that is just a glimpse of uh, our new version. So I request all of you to download our Eon XR app. It's available to download on App Store and Play Store. If you have uh, wearable devices such as Oculus Quest or Magic Leap, you can actually download the app for those devices as well. So uh, today's focus is on AR Assist. So AR Assist is also a dedicated app. Uh, it's available for uh, both iOS and Android devices as well. And it's also available for HoloLens along with uh, a desktop application for experts to logging in. Uh, we will also be releasing the Mac OS version uh, in um, uh, later this year in Q3 as well. So let's get started and you know, let's have a quick application walkthrough of what uh, AR Assist app can do and also how it looks like. So what we have done for today's session is we've actually recorded uh, you know, a session uh, from an expert computer. So you can actually see how an expert actually sees uh, you know, a technician who is actually wearing a whole lens. Uh, for hands-free experience and you can also see uh, the various kind of features that uh, the technician can actually use to collaborate with the expert okay so let's get started so this is actually the desktop user interface so what expert can do he can actually log in with his eon xr uh, credentials so and uh, you can just enter the details and for the new users they can also start for free as well so we have three minutes free trial for them uh, to, to kind of explore the features of the app so what we can do as you can quickly see here uh, the expert has started a session he can he copied the room code and he can actually use the social media platform to kind of share the code with the technician so technician can actually receive the notification either via email or via you know whatsapp or skype or any social media platform and you can just you know, scan the QR code or even enter the room code manually using the HoloLens device or either iOS or iPad devices to log in. And right now, this is what the expert is seeing. Uh, uh, you know, he's actually seeing the live camera view of the HoloLens user. Uh, for team members who actually uh, are not sure what a HoloLens device is, it actually looks something like this. So this is actually a helmet-mounted HoloLens device, but the device actually comes with a visor, you know, you can actually wear it, and it actually comes with a see-through display uh, that lets the technicians to see the real world and also kind of overlay some visual information uh, as well. And we would actually see what kind of information that you can see and how you can actually collaborate with this expert uh, to get some real-time decisions. So straight off, if you can see here, the uh, from a uh, expert point of view, he's not only seeing the technician's camera view, but he can also have some various options for him, and he can see all the interactions that the uh, the technician can perform as well. As you can see from a technician point of view, here the technician is actually uh, can just bring his hand up front, and he can actually see uh, the menu options uh, right at his hand, just like that. And so there are different options. We'll actually go through all these options that uh, the technician can actually use to collaborate with the expert. And we'll also look at the options that expert can actually use to collaborate with the technician as well. And this user interface is kind of uh, very easy for anyone to understand. It also doesn't actually take up any screen space for the technician. And especially like if you're if the technician is working uh, in um, in uh, in an, in a, in a, in a, in a non-site field, right, or uh, or in a cramped location where you know he really want to share his entire camera view. He does, you know, we don't want to block the 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 view by adding some like you know static UI. So the UI is always hidden, apart from the room code that's on the top. You know, the technicians uh, you know menu options are always hidden on the hand menu. He can either use left hand or right hand to just you know, kind of pop up the menu options and you can just choose one of the options to interact with it. It's also quite conveniently designed for both left-handed and right-handed persons as well. So it's very easy for anyone to, you know, quickly, you know, start using the application. As you can see, what, what the expert is doing is expert is actually kind of, uh, you know, kind of trying to explore how we can actually annotate. So our annotations are actually, you know, it's almost like a draw tool. So we can actually use our bare hands to draw in the physical environment. So it's quite useful, especially if you want to kind of uh, like, you know, highlight, uh, you know, uh, equipment faulty. Or, you know, if you want to kind of point and, you know, you know, showcase like some of the key points of interest that you want to showcase. In this case, I think what you can see here, the technician is actually kind of circling around an object. 
and you can see the annotation stick around the real world. So, you know, uh, which is quite a useful tool. You can actually draw as well. The drawing is quite fun as he's holding like, you know, an invisible pen to draw around. You can choose from various colors as well. And not only that, uh, so we can also switch to different uh, drawing options, like not just drawing where his hand is, he can also point to the, uh, uh, to the surfaces that are far from his reach, like for example, ceiling, uh, or, you know, so, or components that are really far ahead. Like in this case, you know, we are just showing an example of uh, drawing on the whiteboard on the surface. So our application recognizes the environment that the technician is in and allows, you know, the user to kind of draw uh, either on top of the component or on any surface as well. So it's quite easy and actually it's quite useful, uh, you know, because it's completely hands free and technicians can actually kind of hold tools in their hand as well while kind of annotating. So, uh, you know, it doesn't really kind of uh, 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 have any kind of interference when they're interacting with the physical equipment as well. And we also have this uh, point tool, the pointer, like a small arrow. So, and you know, the arrow also follows the either the user hand. They can just they can just place it wherever they want. So, and they all stay there unless and until the technician or the expert want to erase them or remove them. Okay, and so this is a quick overview of how we can erase. So it's quite, quite fun. So they can just point to the annotations that they have drawn and then they just disappear. It's quite easy to use. So. Just like that. So what uh, our expert can do in this collaborative session is, you know, not only annotate, but, you know, the expert can also kind of share some critical information that is needed for the technician. It can be like an image or a PDF, you know, or even a video, for example. So let's see how an expert shares it. Like, you know, as we are seeing from an expert point of view, this is actually a screen recording of the expert's uh, computer screen. So right if you can see the expert have just shared an image and the technician sees like a notification, you can either accept or reject it, it. And if he accepts it, he would see the image. And you know, the image actually scales based on the resolution of the original image is, and the expert can actually interact with it, you know, place it wherever he wants, it is convenience as well. And, and these interactions are same as you will see shortly for, uh, you know, videos and PDFs and other data sheets as well. You can also minimize it. And if you want to kind of not uh, uh, not take up the entire screen space, you know, the technician can choose to minimize it to keep it on one side and then come back and review it at a later stage as well. Or the technician can choose to lock the position at one and at one fixed point as well. So, now a video as well. Yes. And you can see this is actually a live recording and you know um, the network connectivity and the streaming quality will be at full HD and uh, if you are actually working on like no network uh, locations don't worry the quality of the streaming will adapt based on your available network very similar to like you know how YouTube uh, for example streams our videos if you watch so the quality will kind of adjust based on the available bandwidth so in this case technician just placed it right next uh, to the image and you can always have like the standard controls for the video, such as play, pause, adjusting the volume, or also scroll bar to scroll it forward and backward as well. And you can also share different types of PDF. So uh, we have an inbuilt PDF viewer, which is quite useful. And this PDF viewer can, uh, it's not just text based. You can also have share the data sheets or, you know, share some mechanical drawings as well. They render quite well in the, in the whole lens device. And by the way, all the features that we are seeing here are also available if you are using an iOS or Android device as well.
So let it be a smartphone or tablet as well. So they're all available uh, for all the devices. And if your uh, PDF actually has multiple images, you can actually, you know, just scroll it up and down as we have just shown. And also another cool feature is, and this is actually, by the way, our Eon XR uh, platform, and this is actually the web page of our platform. So our platform allows, uh, you know, the users to upload their own 3D models, or you can also kind of uh, use our uh, 3D models available in our marketplace as well to create experiences. So what we're doing here is we're actually copying one of the links uh, from, from our library. And the expert can quickly go back uh, to the ARC session. You can actually paste it in the chat box. And that's how you can actually share the 3D model as well. And this is how the user can actually interact with the 3D models. So, and if you upload your 3D models at real scale, and they would appear in its original scale in the collaborator experience as well. And, uh, and the technician always have an option to kind of move the objects. If you can see here, you can also interact multiple components at the same time. So, and, the, and these interactions are very easy. So you can actually kind of grab it at one point, or you can also grab the entire object with just by grabbing with your hands. You can use any hand for interactions. Place it wherever you want as well. If I can quickly jump, you can also kind of disable the bounds once you decided that, you know, you actually are happy with the position so that so that the 3D model will not move. So, and you can also kind of use your hand pointer to point to the 3D model itself. If you actually want to point to the 3D model and ask, you know, hey, can I know what this component is all about? You can actually do that as well. And here's another one we're just showing of one use case of sharing a data sheet as well. So if I can quickly jump ahead you can kind of place the data sheets of your components right next to the 3d model as well and if you're working in front of an actual component you can place the 3d model on overlay on top of your original component i have a use case i will actually show you at later in today's session where one of the client actually does that And by the way, you're not just restricted to place one image or one PDF. You can actually load multiple images, multiple 3D models, multiple images, and you know you can just pin them to the location that you want. So there is virtually no limit for that. Uh, you can actually fill your entire space uh, with different components during your collaborative experience. You can also kind of mute and unmute your mic, as you can see here, if you're working on a noisy environment. You can just uh, kind of have a collaboration just by the video streaming and sharing the files as well. And, uh, and you can end your call. So let me take a pause here. So what the, uh, so what the expert can also do is you can, he can actually draw on the technician's uh, real world environment as well. And along with it, they can actually also, uh, you know, take a screenshot of the, uh, of the technician's camera view. Uh, he can, of course, mute and unmute his mic. He can use the chat option for sharing the 3D models for the HoloLens option. But if in case yeah, the technician is using iPad or Android devices, you know, they can actually use this for a standard chat as well, along with the voice over IP communication that they would be communicating with the, uh, with the technician. And this, the, and of course, you know, the file uh, sharing option is here, which is used for sharing the various uh, information. So that's, uh, the, that's what the AR session is doing. A quick app overview. So let me go. So uh, let me review the features once again. So what we can do, we can actually connect with uh, uh, with the technicians on field, and uh, you know, and we can actually view the technicians' camera view. We get a presence of as if we are physically being present. And uh, what we can actually do is we can actually uh, have voice over IP communication, say, you know, and uh, you know, share some contextual information to help resolve some technical issues. And not only that, we can also do like, uh, you know, weekly reviews as well, uh, quite useful during the current, uh, you know, work from home or, you know, remote working, uh, you know, times where, uh, you know, the project managers or the operation managers would not have access to go to the site 
at all days. So, you know, they can just use our AR session to actually do the project reviews as well. So, and, and what we can, we can also kind of, uh, you know, annotate. And uh, as we have seen just now in the video, uh, AR Assist actually allows for hands-free collaboration. So, you know, technician can, doesn't actually have to always hold like an iPad or a device on his hand. He can choose to wear a, a HoloLens device and, you know, he can actually hold his tools uh, if, he's, if he's trying to learn uh, how to, uh, you know, repair a component and still kind of collaborate with the uh, expert or the subject matter expert uh, uh, to get his issue resolved. Okay, we have seen smart annotations, you know, you know how easy it is to annotate, it's quite fun to use and the annotations actually stick on the real world objects as well. And we can uh, share uh, various type of data with, uh, with, uh, with the technicians. Okay, so uh, I've actually prepared some reference use cases and again, these reference use cases are also recorded, uh, you know, uh, from, uh, from, the, from the HoloLens camera view and you can actually see here, uh, the first one is actually recorded from the expert view. So here, so I can actually quickly jump through here. Actually, what, uh, as you can see, what the technician can do, technician can actually kind of uh, share his camera view. Like for example, you need some help in understanding, you know, how to use a fire hose, for example. So the expert, uh, we can't we can't actually hear what they're talking because I've actually muted it, uh, but they're actually communicating here. So. And you know, expert is giving some instructions, and technicians follow it. And this, you can see this always like this uh, uh, kind of a pointer that kind of indicates which uh, which particular component or the item the expert is pointing to. And an expert can actually share some uh, you know data sheets such as PDFs or videos as well, so which helps the uh, technician. Okay, so this is one use case. I'm going to share another use case here, uh, and this is actually a short recording of uh, you know how SBS uh, is actually one of the leading bus providers here in Singapore are actually using uh, the AR Assist. So, and of course, in this case, uh, you know, uh, up until now we have actually seen the uh, expert's camera view, but uh, expert's point of view. I think in a minute we'll actually see how. Uh, the whole lens user is actually seeing it. And you can see in real world there are, there's no object here, but actually, you know, this is what he's seeing. So he placed an object on this uh, workbench and this is actually the training area in the SBS. So where they actually try and, uh, and certify uh, the, uh, you know, various uh, AEs uh, and also like, you know, uh, engineers and servicemen. And, uh, you know, and this is actually part of the training and onboarding process where they would be given access to uh, our AR assist. So where the, you know, the trainer, the tutor shares the models uh, in real time and, you know, uh, uh, kind of explains them how it works. And, you know, the technician actually can actually look, look at the 3D model or look at the PDFs or images and, you know, watch it, some animation that's been played on the videos and learn. And in this case, uh, you know, he's just placing the 3D model on the table, but not just that. If I actually can quickly jump in, we can also place the 3D model overlay, overlay the 3D model on top of the actual component itself. And if I can quickly jump in, I'm going to show you how it looks like. So yeah, this is how it looks like from a whole lens point of view. You can see. So this is what uh, the technician is actually seeing. gets an understanding of where this component goes and you know how it works okay. continue so uh, some of the key value proposition of the AR assist it helps us to reduce uh, travel and operational costs and uh, you know it's very easy to use as you have seen just now Helps to uh, helps the companies to adapt, uh, you know, uh, using remote collaboration tools uh, with AR, and it's cross-platform compatible. 
and that works on smartphones and tablets so you can actually deploy it quite fastly as well and you can share uh, some critical data uh, and we, have, uh, we can also record and archive uh, you know uh, all the information for future references uh, we have an opt-in feature called spatial anchors so in some times you have you uh, during a collaborative session if you place uh, some context information such as pdf or a 3d model in one location if you want to save it you can actually do that as well and this is actually an opt-in feature so and if you actually want that you know uh, during the time of subscription please let us know and we would actually enable that feature for you and uh, uh, if uh, the app is uh, you know complete uh, uh, offers complete privacy we don't actually record or store any uh, data in fact we actually in fact we don't even actually you know store any information uh, any hidden information so all the uh, recordings that we do will be stored on your local drive so there's no way that we can actually access those as well so it's, it's safe to use uh, ar assist supports uh, multiple devices smartphones and tablets and the version that i've shown just now is already available live uh, and if you want to give it a try please write to us and we will be able to you know uh, we'll be able to give you access to it uh, and we are launching the the next version uh, for uh, uh, ios and android uh, that has the same features as the hololens uh, sometime in the middle of next month so you know please uh, take a look at that app and you can actually try out all the features that i've just shown on your smartphones and tablets as well and if you have hololens you know write to us and we'll give you access to try it out as well so uh, with that, I'm going to take a pause here. I'm going to you know, request if anyone of you have any questions. So, okay, so I can see uh, Peter Luo has a question. So, Mr. Peter, uh, I think uh, you can now unmute your mic and ask your question now. Hello? Okay, uh, maybe while we wait for Peter, we also have Kavita Anand who also want to ask a question. So, uh, hi, Ms. Kavita. Uh, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Okay, uh, and in the meantime, uh, if anyone else want to ask your questions, please, you know, uh, write your question on the chat box or you can also select the speak option um, and, you know, you can, you can actually ask your question verbally as well. Okay. Hello. Hello, Mr. Zuleka. So, can you... Can you please ask me a question? So I can see your raise your uh, hand. Okay, so we have a question from uh, Miss Linda Fang. So has there been any use for teaching music? So uh, sorry, I can't unmute the mic. It's okay. Uh, well, it's actually a very good use case. Uh, so you can actually, uh, you can actually, yes, use, uh, you know, uh, our AI assist to actually teach your uh, students music uh, virtually because, you know, uh, uh, you can actually ask your, uh, ask your trainees to, you know, share their camera view using our, using our AI assist app. And you can actually see the keys they are pressing. And if they are not sure what keys to press, you can actually annotate on top of the screen so they would actually know. Uh, so you can share some notes as well, the music notes virtually, so they can actually place it in front of uh, uh, in front of them to understand, you know, what uh, what to press as well. So it's a very good use, very good use case. And yes, definitely AI assist can be used for teaching music. So my request is, please give it a try and uh, you know share your experience with us. Okay, Mr. Ran Maula 
has a question to ask. So, uh, Mr. Rand, you can actually uh, unmute your mic and ask your question now. Seems Ryan has uh, Hi, Ryan. Hi. Hi. Um, so with um with multiple headsets yes. and um with this being um installed on multiple headsets, um would it need separate accounts or can people log in under one account? Uh, well, you need separate account accounts, Mr. Ryan. So how it works is, uh, let's say if you're actually an expert, you have to use your own credential uh, and your technician uses their own credentials to log in. So you can't actually use one credential to log in on both devices. So okay. and uh, the roles and access privileges, like, you know, who can be the technician and who can be the expert and what kinds of uh, access privileges they can have, you can actually manage that with our admin portal from your XR platform web page. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we have a question from Frederick. So is it okay if I ask a question about ENXR integration with LMS module, uh, Moodle LMS? Uh, yeah, sure, I can actually answer shortly, uh, but if you want a much more detailed answer, my request is uh, please write to us uh, in a feedback form and you know our support team will be able to give you a more detailed explanation. Well, the short answer is yes, you can actually integrate with Moodle. So our platform offers LTI integration and uh, we support LTI 1.3 version right now. And uh, you know, you can actually, uh, 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 you can actually kind of uh, get the, uh, the key from our platform. If you, are, if you are an admin, you have access to configure that and then, uh, you know, uh, get the key from our platform and then, you know, add it to your LMS mood, um, uh, model and you can actually create like create, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you can learning activity uh, using our URLs from our XR library. So I hope I answered your question. But if you want, if you want a much more detailed explanation for this, uh, you know my request is please write to our uh, write to our support team and they will get back to you. So, uh, can I know if there are any questions from anyone else? Hello, I have a question. Yes. Uh, please ask. So, sorry, may I know your name, please? Zuleika Seha. Hi, Zuleika. So, can I know uh, from which location you are joining in today? I'm joining from San Antonio, Texas. Ah, nice. Thank you for joining today. Please ask your question. Okay. Uh, so I was wondering if I understand correctly, with the AR Assist, you're only able to use a HoloLens or can you use different headsets? Well, uh, for the variable headsets, we, we currently only support HoloLens, but the, uh, but the app itself is compatible to run on iOS and Android devices as well. Okay. Because I am using the Oculus Quest currently with Eon Reality. Oh, yeah. So uh, you can actually use Eon XR app with Oculus Quest. And uh, that actually gives you all the features of our Eon XR app uh, on, on your device. Uh, so AR works slightly differently from uh, the Eon XR app. As you know, it's actually primarily designed to be uh, you know, uh, a remote collaboration tool. Whereas Eon XR app is primarily designed to be a teaching and learning tool. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And also, do you plan on adding a record option? Yes. Yes. You can actually record. And so I haven't shown this uh, in the recording today, but yes, you can actually record. And the recording will be stored on the local drive on the expert PC. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.
So, uh, can I know if anyone uh, have any other questions? Okay, so uh, we will take one final minute. Uh, you know, if anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask. I do have a uh, one more quick question. Yes, yes. Um, we we um, I'll be using this um for a virtual reality lab um at our community college, um. How many uh, students can this um, support? Okay, uh, uh, you are specifically asking about AR Assist. Yes. Okay, AR Assist currently supports one-on-one -on -one collaboration. So it has to be like you know an expert and a technician, or a, or a trainer and a trainee, a teacher and a student. So uh, it's designed to be a much more personal collaborative experience between uh, two individuals. Uh, but our UNXR meeting actually supports, uh, for, you know, kind of a group collaboration as well. Uh, it's primarily designed for, uh, you know, learning and teaching purposes. Uh, if you haven't tried out, please try out our UNXR meetings. It supports uh, up to 50 years in one session. So you can give it a try. Uh, and it's quite, uh, it's quite an effective tool. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions from anyone? Okay, so uh, please note that uh, the recording of this session will be shared uh, with all of you. Uh, and if you have any further questions, uh, please reach out to us and we would be happy to assist you. And if you would, if you would like to try out AR Assist, uh, you know, please uh, write to us and we'll be giving you access so you can actually give it a try as well. And uh, uh, and once again, uh, thanks a lot for joining today's session uh, and wish you all, uh, uh, you know, stay safe and, you know, we hope you enjoy uh, using your Nexa platform as much as we do. Thanks a lot for joining today and have a nice day. Stay safe.